Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to look into the handle submit function that coming from the use form hook form and how you can leverage that method. So let's get into the code sandbox. So in this code sandbox, I have a single input get register in the React hook form and I yet to use any of the handle submit method. So I just wanted to quickly showcase what handle submit actually kind of does behind the things. So let's go with a kind of native uh, React way of attaching on, on submit function. So we can go on submit. And let's just quickly creating that function. And the moment we're actually submitting the form, we actually refresh the entire page. Because by default, if you're not preventing um, the default behavior, prevent default, the form will get refreshed and submitting the data to the next destination. So now if you're providing either prevent default, notice your form actually does not get submitted by the way. And you can actually access that event target as well, uh, which is this object. So really what handle submit is trying to do, it's doing that step for you, which is preventing the form gets submitted to the next page or getting page refreshed. And at the same time, validating and collecting different sorts of data that you actually register in the form. So now let's switch that to handle submit. So what we can do is we can keep the same function there. We can wrap this as handle submit. And let's import that function from the use form. Just like that. So basically handle submit, it does like a curry function so, and getting involved. So what really happened in here, if I just turning that into a longer version, it's basically this. So it's really acting as a middle guy, taking the event and submitting the data. And notice that the first argument that we supplied is no longer gonna be the event itself, it's actually gonna be the data that you're submitting with. So if I console log out the data, and uh, we should be seeing the input that we register with. So what if I want to access that um, that event? Well, it's gonna be in the second argument. So we can access that as well, if that's something that you need to access. So if I press submit now, uh, we're gonna get the form data, also the event. Cool, that works great. So what if Say for example, I want to actually capture some of the error on the page with a callback. Now, React Hook Form does supply with the second argument, so we can call it on error. And if we're gonna have this in here, what this function does is gonna execute when there's something wrong on the page. So in this case, let's actually associate it with a validation rule as required equal true now in theory the, the handle submits should be blocked here we go um so it, we can see that when we're submitting the form the handle submit didn't go to the on submit function uh on submit function instead of going to that on error cool that's great now next let's look into some of the type script support that we can have with the handle submit and you straight away notice that we got underline in here that the data is kind of you know returned as any. One of the quick what, quickest way to improve the type support on the data payload is actually keeping them in line. So uh, that way, React hook form can actually inferring the data uh, through whatever you actually being declared. So if you can see that inside, uh, now we got in, uh, now we're getting the correct type support uh, for the entire form. So you can go data the first name or whatever input that you get registered however if that's not the case uh, readability wise it's probably better to actually give it a separate function so we can always easily to do with just associate it with the generic that you actually being declared on your entire uh, form values cool nice now let's move on to the thing uh, it's associated with disabled input 
Now in React talk form, we try to more align with kind of native form behavior. So if it inputs get set with the disable flag as a true, uh, the result is going to be that input will become undefined. So let's just quickly um, verify that. If I submit them in the form, it's going to be come undefined. Okay, the last part I want to cover is arrow handling. And one thing I probably didn't mention to you is on submit function can be asynchronous. So which that means you can actually have Ajax request inside your uh, on submit callback. And that way you can actually trigger, say, custom arrow type with uh, set arrow API, which I have a separate video uh, for explaining this API. Now let's just quickly importing a sleep function that pretending uh, this is going to be asynchronous uh, request. Let's give it that type as number. So what we can do in here, we can set that become an asynchronous function. And then we can say, let's sleep for one second before we actually resolving for the data. And let's quickly try this out. And if we submit, we'll be waiting for one second, then the result gets resolved. So talking to that, people were asking, okay, so what happened if there is an error happened? So normally you would like to actually, you know, try and catch that error and resolve yourself. Say for example, like set error and give it a uh, associated name, server side, and then you can give it a, um, a type, server side error, and then you can give it a message, something as well. Now, what if you actually didn't wrap this with trying to catch? Now, handle submit function inside will actually not try and catch the error. Instead, it will actually toss that back to you. So let me just quickly showcase what happened if you try to throw an error inside. As you can see, there will actually uh, throw an error to your application. So how do you catch that? Um, the method is actually quite easy as well. So basically, you want to supply the event to the function itself and do a dot catch in here. Now you will be able to actually catch that error and do something about it. Now we got the error catched. So this is basically how you handling error. Now the next part I want to quickly touch on that is what if I want to do a remote submission that doesn't actually go through on submit. Now this is actually something pretty straightforward, which I already demonstrated. Uh, something would be like this. So instead of sending that from on submit, we can actually creating a button. call a fake submit and we can give that as a type and on click equal the callback function we just had in this time we want to supply it uh, we can supply the event as well but it's optional with something like that we can actually trigger uh, oops the fake submit oops let me just quickly remove this error and let's console log uh, the data in here. And if we do this, we're getting the correct result as well. That was me. One thing that's um, pretty important is if you're doing this kind of a, you know, uh, trigger on click on a button. Now, this is probably against accessibility. For example, the enter key is not going to be working anymore because the enter key will actually do an on submit function rather than on click so itself. So, I try to avoid this kind of a custom type of a handle submit to just embrace the native on submit functionality, which providing with all this accessibility out of the box. Cool. I think that's pretty much cover a lot of things about handle submit. And uh, if you've got any more questions, feel free to leave in the comment section below. And the documentation is always up to date as well. And